Thank you very much, Dr. Booney, for the kind introduction. So good morning, everyone. Uh, so just as what mentioned earlier, I'll be talking about the immunization status, particularly the National Immunization Program of the Philippines. Uh, so basically, the National Immunization of the Philippines has been uh, with the DOH since 1976, so that's around four decades already. It's one of the pioneer programs of the department, and that's, it has been established two years after the World Health Organization uh, established the EPI. Uh, it was called EPI during the earlier days. And now the National Immunization Program of the Philippines actually covers uh, the whole life stage approach. So from pregnancy, from neonates, from infants, to childhood, even adolescents, and of course the elderly. So for the pregnant uh, patients or population, we offer free tetanus diphtheria vaccines. Uh, at least uh, they receive two to three doses depending on their vaccination history when it comes to tetanus diphtheria. And for the newborn, we also provide uh, our newborn with free BCG vaccine and hepatitis B vaccine. And for the infants, since uh, we believe that uh, the children should be the one who, uh, and to receive most of our vaccines, free vaccines for that matter, uh, we provide at least seven free vaccines to them, protecting against 14 uh, vaccine-preventable diseases. And we also give our school-aged children free vaccines. That's our measles rubella vaccine, tetanus diphtheria vaccine. And for our grade four uh, learners, uh, particularly uh, 9 to 14 year old female, we give them a free hepa uh, human papilloma virus vaccine. And for ad adulthood, uh, currently we only provide free pneumococcal and influenza polyvalent vaccine among indigent senior citizens, uh, particularly because this is, these, are one, these are two of the most expensive vaccines. Uh, that's why we have limited uh, uh, target population for our uh, elderly. However, we still aim as we propose more budget for our national immunization program that the eligible population be expanded uh, even among non-indigent senior citizens. There are also vaccines in the pipeline that we wanted to introduce, subject of course to the positive recommendation of our Health Technology Assessment Council uh, in accordance with our Universal Health Care Act. So we wanted to focus first on the vaccination status of the children. So the D Department of Health has this uh, indicator called the fully immunized child. And a fully immunized child is someone who received the following vaccines at 12 months. So one dose of BCG at birth, three doses of our oral polio vaccine, three doses of, of our pentavalent vaccine, which includes uh, the uh, diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, hepatitis B and our H influenza B, and two doses of our measles containing vaccine. So currently, the measles containing vaccine that we have right now in the NIP is the measles mumps rubella vaccine. Uh, so you can see in the graph on your, le on your left that the coverage of our fully immunized shell has been declining over the past years. So from 75% in 2012, it has gone down to 63% last year. And it has been um, a lot of challenge, uh, especially at our at the Department of Health, to really mobilize everyone to prioritize uh, the F national immunization program or the routine vaccination. Primarily because, especially in during the pandemic, there's a competition of resources, particularly our human resources for health. Uh, even prior to pandemic, most of our uh, implementers in the local government units the nurses there the, uh, and other health workers are really doing all the programs of the, of, the, of the country. And it has been exasperated when the COVID-19 pandemic, since we focus more on protecting with uh, our population against this uh, pandemic. I also highlighted the BCG dose because since this indicator is a set of uh, vaccines, it's actually the birth dose of BCG that's kind of um, pulling down the, the coverage. Uh, the, for the rest of the uh, vaccines like OPV, pentavalent, and the MCV, the coverage is actually more than the FIC coverage, so that's around 70 to 75%. However, our coverage for the BCG 
uh, is roughly around 60 to 65 percent. That's why our FIC uh, coverage has been really pulled down uh, because of it. So we're, we're, we're also doing our best to inform uh, our, uh, our issues and as most especially our birth centers to provide this BCG and of course the hepatitis B vaccine at birth. Uh, now showing here is the disaggregation of our coverage uh, per subnational level. So we can see here that almost almost around four regions have actually uh, covered more than 70% and around 13 regions I believe have uh, coverage higher than the national uh, coverage. Well, the rest of the uh, regions have actually uh, a coverage below our national uh, FIC coverage. And I heard, and I'm sure there are LGUs present here, so hopefully uh, we can work together in order for us to improve our uh, national, our coverage or our we can cover more children in order for them to be protected against various vaccine preventable diseases. So we just wanted to show here, you know, um, last July or August, the Western Pacific Regional of Office had a meeting on the on the Regional Vaccine Vac Verification Committee on Measles, and we sh it was showed that because of our low coverage of our measles containing vaccine, there are uh, around 3 million or more children who are less than 5 years old are projected to be accumulated and are vulnerable against measles by the end of uh, this year. And there is a potential of a large measles outbreak if we do not do anything uh, with regard to the co protection or the coverage of our vaccines. And I think it, this, this, is, this event is also an important avenue for us to relay that the Department of Health is actually planning to conduct a supplemental immunization activity early next year for measles rubella. And the World Health Organization also recommended that we add the oral polio vaccine uh, in the supplemental immunization activity because both uh, the countries or the, this, the Philippines is uh, susceptible or uh, at risk in both measles and polio. Showing here also the measles risk assessment done by the World Health Organization on your left. And we can see here that the whole country is actually at high risk for a measles outbreak. Uh, the criteria of the World Health Organization has actually considered four factors. The measles surveillance performance, the coverage of our uh, measles containing vaccine, also the coverage of our measles rubella uh, supplemental immunization activities done uh, in the previous year. So, if you remember, we conducted again uh, MROPVC yeah, last 2020 and 2020, yeah, 2020 and 2021. And they also considered the program delivery performance of uh, every province. And as of 2022, that's our data as of September, uh, we can see here that a lot of regions still need to um, uh, there are still a lot of areas that have a lot of unvaccinated children who are less than two years old. And with these significant gaps, uh, there is a need really to uh, immunize or to provide uh, vaccines to our children so that we will be able to prevent the rapid accumulation of our susceptible children against measles and of course other vaccine preventable diseases. So what have what has been the actions taken by the Department of Health. So in 2021, the Department of Health actually released a administrative order or a guide, a set of guidelines in introducing our catch-up immunization. So the catch-up immunization is a, is a chance to provide, to given to our uh, less than two years old. Since our NIP, the target population of our, uh, of our NIP is really at 12 months, however, there, since there are a lot of children who miss their schedule or who miss their vaccines that were given to them, we expand, we extended the schedule. So we are already giving free vaccines, our seven vaccines for the children, even among those less than two years old. Um, since we launched this during the pandemic and also at the height of the COVID-19 vaccination, you can see that the coverage is really quite low. So the uh, we used the MCV1 and MCV2 as our 
uh, indicator for this presentation. So the coverage is only at around 8,000 to 10,000, uh, 0 to 23 months old uh, for our catch up in 2021. So we had a special campaign during the fourth quarter of 2021. And however, the results show that uh, there, is still, uh, the, the, there are few children who were vaccinated. Also, as part of our um, actions, uh, uh, amidst COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we shifted our school-based immunization, our MR, our TD, and our HPV vaccination to a community-based approach uh, vaccination. So here you can see that around 800,000 to 1.2 million children were, vaccine, were given um, measles rubella vaccine. So, this, the figures here show our coverage for the measles rubella vaccine. And also in the second quarter of this year, we again launched what we call the Chiquiting Vaccination Day. So this is again a catch-up immunization as well as um, strengthening our routine immunization. Uh, so compared to the early, to the 2021 catch-up immunization, at least we were able to get higher coverage for the children when it comes to our measles containing vaccine dose one and dose two. Um, as part of our uh, actions, so that uh, we would be able to at least prevent and slow down our uh, the potential outbreak of measles, uh, we again um, enjoined our uh, regions and our LGUs to conduct catch-up immunization during the fourth quarter. So while we are waiting, for the implementation of our supplemental immunization activity, we enjoined them to uh, do the catch-up uh, catch of routine immunization in the fourth quarter in the coming days. And we also encourage everyone here to continuously and regularly conduct uh, uh, catch-up immunization so that uh, we would be able to protect more children against vaccine-preventable diseases. So what are the, aside from the actions taken in order for us to close the gaps, so there are also some um, directions that are the DOH has actually started already. So first one is the expansion of immunization services throughout the life course. So this year, the Department of Health also released the Omnibus Health Guideline. So it includes all the recommendations uh, for health services, which includes vaccination as well across all ages. So. Although the vaccines being offered by the Department of Health is only limited because our resources are also limited, the Omnibus Health Guidelines have actually, has actually included other vaccines that are recommended per age group. So the Department of Health, despite not uh, giving uh, the other antigens, we still re uh, encourage everyone to get their vaccines, whether it be your, uh, whether it be the, for infants, for adolescents, for adults, and elderly. Also, we, um, the Department of Health, in collaboration with the University of the Philippines National Institutes of Health, has released the phase two of our periodic health examination, and it also uh, it is also uh, included there the vaccines recommended for across uh, across age groups. So, uh, both the omnibus health guidelines and the periodic health examination phase two have actually. Uh, encouraging everyone to get their, to get themselves vaccinated. We have also scaled up our some of our pilot implementation of our newer vaccines. So for the IPV two, prior to 2021, the IP the two dose IPV are only implemented in high risk regions. So those regions that have reported um, polio in their AFP surveillance and in their environmental surveillance, but. Uh, starting 2022, we have already implemented the two-dose IPV nationwide. This is also in uh, in accordance with uh, the our fight against uh, and our closure no, against the uh, a recent polio outbreak in 2019 to 2021. We have also expanded our HPV vaccination sites. Uh, although currently, you no know, the 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 implementation of HPV vaccination is still not being uh, implemented nationwide, but we are slowly expanding when it comes to uh, regions or to LGUs that are implementing HPV vaccination. 
primarily because again HPV is actually the most expensive uh, vaccine in our program right now that's why we are slowly um, expanding our implementation of our HPV vaccination and when it comes to addressing uh, vaccine preventable uh, diseases control uh, the Epidemiology Bureau has actually started and expanding the epidemic prone disease case surveillance even among our level three hospitals I think Director uh, De Guzman will talk about it later on. And the Research Institute for Tropical Medicine has also started expanding their VPD sub-national referral laboratories. I believe there are seven. They have started already uh, capacitating seven sub-national laboratories across the country in order for us to uh, expedite or at least streamline the processes when it comes to uh, surveillance of our various specimens. And I think that is the last of my slides. Uh, before I end, I would like to thank, of course, the Meru Foundation and the PINSP for inviting the Department of Health, particularly the National Immunization Program. And this is a great, re this is really a great avenue for us to share what are what is happening in the program and what are the actions being taken uh, for us to uh, increase our coverage and protect my children. So, thank you very much.